12 days away from Christmas. 12 days away from Christmas. As our days progress toward Christmas, it feels like we are gravitating towards the very much needed warmth, which we missed so, so much for the past nine months. The decorations, the lights, as you get ready to send your Christmas cards, I feel like the intentionality is, is on a different level this year. There's more appreciation to those people you love. And this year, you really want to do something about that feeling of appreciation. right? And it's all about the effort. It's all about the effort because nothing will be defined as perfect this Christmas. There's also some sense of relief to that, that it won't be perfect. Just by saying that, there's a relief, right? Perhaps we are able to let go of some, uh, some of our regular holiday stress this year because no one's Christmas will be perfect. But we simply and slowly walk towards that hope, joy, peace, and love during this season. But into our struggle to stay optimistic, to stay positive, the, to anticipate the message of hope of Emmanuel, God with us, even during this pandemic, to anticipate the story that we love to hear every year during this time, the manger which we gather around to simply listen to the birthing of the light into the darkness. And yet, during these weeks of Advent, it seems like it's not going to give them to us very, um, an easy way. It is as, a, as checking off the last few boxes in the last page of our calendar. 2020 calendar. All we had for the past two weeks in terms of scripture reading on Sundays is one character, John, John. Nothing colorful as our Christmas, nothing shiny as we want our Christmas to be, but more of a primitive costume and a rough voice in the wilderness disrupting our desire towards something prettier and warmer. Unlike the familiar versions of the Christian uh, Christmas story, John's first, the Gospel of John's version of the nativity scene is almost disruptive to our expectation of that very story. No Mary and Joseph in there, no, mar no manger, nor the animals, no shepherds, nor the star, no angels from heaven, nor any foreigners from the east. The seasonal rhythm that is taking us towards to internally and externally as you see around, John the Baptist disrupts it resists it, introduces some negativity to the tiny, tiny, tiny optimism that we are trying to desperately hold on to this year, this Christmas. So we join those priests and, and, the, and the Levites from Jerusalem asking the question, the question, who are you? Who are you to disrupt our life? The question, who are you, echoes throughout the scripture. In the book of Genesis chapter 27, we know the story where Jacob pretends to be his brother Esau to be blessed by their aging father Isaac. Remember this story. The plan was successful. After the blessing of Jacob, the real Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. Esau prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father, asking, My father, please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may 
give me your blessing. Isaac, the father who thought he just blessed his son Esau, was bewildered. And here the question echoes from his mouth. The very same question that we heard today. Who are you? In the book of Ruth, the family of Ruth and her mother-in-law Naomi had to leave home to escape from famine. We know this story. In Bethlehem, they seek help from one of Naomi's relatives, uh, whose name was Boaz, which he did, gracefully, embraced them. Later in the story, there is a part where Naomi tries to set up Ruth, her daughter-in-law, with Boaz by having Ruth secretly lay in Boaz, Boaz's bed while he is asleep. In the middle of the night, something startled Boaz. He turned. And there was a woman lying at his feet. And here, once again, that same question echoes in the scripture. Who are you? Who are you? In the book of Acts, at the scene of Saul's conversion, on his way to Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And then from Saul's mouth, that same question, who are you? Either you are on the asking or answering side of this question. We all feel the power of this question. Because this is a question we have wrestled at some point of our lives. We know that our answers to the question continue to evolve at this very moment as we live through the pandemic world, the world of uncertainties both as individuals, as institutions, and as a humanity, as a whole. We wrestle with that question. Who are we? You know, as parents, this is where you are, are ready to go all in for your child, to be supportive and loving as they wrestle with this question on their own when they leave the nest of whose son or whose daughter but when we painfully swallow the reality that it's their lives that they will be living after all, all we can do is to try to find a balance how much we preach. Know yourself. Be yourself to them over and over before they really get it on their own. Perhaps that continuous balancing effort is where we find ourselves during this season of Advent in 2020. Well, it seems like John knows the answer. And for those of you who love bullet points like me, there are two things we can learn from John. Two simple steps. The first is to know who you are not. And I'm not saying this so much in terms of our inabilities or, or I'm not saying this so much in terms of being negative about ourselves, but I'm saying this in terms of being clear on what we are, who we are, and what we can do. And more importantly, I'm saying this in terms of gaining the sense of a purpose. Because once you have that clarity, then you don't have to feel sorry and defensive every time that you have to say no to. When someone tries, especially when someone tries to spread you thin on the bread. John said to the questions, who are you? John said it. I am not the Messiah. I am not Elijah. I am not the prophet. 
And he said those answers clearly and boldly. And that's the clarity which leads to the next step, next bullet point, which is to know who you are. But more importantly, to know who you are in relation with Christ. I think there's a difference. There's a different emphasis to that phrase. To know who you are in relation to Christ. When the priests and Levites were getting a little anxious, not having a clear answer from John as they wanted to, John gives them an answer. I am the voice. Quoting the words from the book of Isaiah. The voice of one calling in the wilderness make straight the way for the Lord. And he continues saying, I baptize with water, but the one who comes after me, the Christ, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. John knew exactly who he was and what his role in relation to Christ. And he is inviting us to reflect on that question as people who are on this third week of Advent journey. Despite the disruption of all our Christmas tendencies, who are you? Who are you in relation to Christ? Who are we? As a church, who are we as a church in relation to Christ? Last evening, I drove down to uh, downtown to take some photos the, of the newly added cross um, and, the, and the star decorations at the front door of our church. Uh, thanks to Kevin and Kathy Reed for for uh, your creativity and your willingness to put uh, put these decorations on, and and that's the photo that uh, that you saw in, uh, when you were entering the YouTube channel and also uh, in the bulletin. But I'll show you it, uh, share this with you again. Um, hoping that this will work. And then. Um, so this is the photo from the Cliff Street. As I drove down through our neighborhood and to downtown, seeing the Christmas decorations doing its thing all over our neighborhood and downtown, and then setting the brightly, uh, and then seeing the brightly lit cross and the star at the front door of Trinity Church. It reminds me again of the vision I almost postponed to 2021 because it's so busy and it's Christmas. You know how it goes. The vision that I envisioned when I, when I first entered the church in the Holy Land, the Church of Sermon on the Mount, the first phrase that caught my attention Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Which helped me time travel back to those middle school years when my teenage self knew there's something that I can do to be a peacemaker in terms of the religious tension between Christianity and Muslims. The lit cross, looking at the lit cross at the church's front door. Remind me of where the Christmas story that we dearly love is leading us to. It reminded me of the ending of that story. We re it reminded me of the climax of the story. It reminded of who we are. The church, who cares? A place where we try our very best to live out the peace of Christ within this community, this beautiful community of Montpelier. Why do we decorate our houses? Why do we put up those lights? 
Perhaps it is a way of our desire to be our best selves as we host our guests. And the guests we are waiting for in our life at this, this season is Christ. So let us bring out the prettiest decorations we've got. Let us less worry about the things we are not, but ask the question, echoing our ancestors from the Bible, who are we in relation to Christ? This Advent, I pray that each one of us can be our very best selves to welcome the most important guest in our lives, who is Jesus Christ. And I believe that the definition of the best self is that wherever you are in the journey of life is to have the clarity of your life in relation to Christ. That's, that's the best version of yourself. And that is the best version of us as the church. Be the hands, be the feet, be the knitter, be the cook, be the driver, be the hugger, be the listener, be the encourager, be the mask wearer, be the lover, be the artist, be the musician, be the singer, be the one who loves to write the cards. Be the one who will pick up the phone randomly to check on our neighbors. And, and, be the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Make straight the way for the Lord. Amen.